Hello, and welcome to the Jailer on Mythic. After a grueling raid tier, this fight doesn't let off the gas. I'll be breaking it up into several parts, one for each of the four phases. Each phase is essentially a traversal around the room as many of the mechanics evolve, changing the way you have to deal with them. This fight has very little downtime, especially in the later phases, and many mechanics that require you to pre-position correctly. Therefore, it's extremely valuable to have a game plan and anticipate how you will handle the next set of mechanics, rather than trying to react. So without further ado, let's jump into phase one. Just like Heroic, the Jailer will target players with a Rune of Domination that will detonate after a few seconds, and needs to be isolated by jumping into one of the holes around the room. You'll get six at a time, and need to use all of the holes by the end of the phase. So to quickly assign players to different holes, you'll want to use a weak aura like this, forming a triangle with six holes. The first formation we used is located here, with the top, left, right, back left, middle, and back right, and subsequent triangles located clockwise around the room. One trick you can use is to orient yourself with the blue line that extends from the center of the room and always represents the right side of the triangle. So when I get a bomb, the first thing I like to do is see which row I'm in, top, middle, or bottom, so I'm able to start moving either towards the center or away from the center of the room while I find the blue line and figure out exactly which hole I need to go into. It's a good idea to always be prepared for the worst case scenario, which is usually the back left location, and have movement available to get there in time. After you jump, you'll be launched backwards slightly based on the direction you're facing when the rune explodes. You want to be careful not to move your camera until after you've started your upwards acceleration. This way you'll land very close to where you jumped, which is necessary if you need to help soak an Azeroth heal or to stay out of a high congestion area. On Mythic, you now need to heal Azeroth to keep the Jailer from ending the fight early. This works by creating a chain of players from the Azerite pools around the room to Azeroth in the center. Each pool will do 3 ticks, doing ramping damage but also giving you a stacking stat buff. In Phase 1, these soaks should happen 2 at a time with one isolated group of ranged players and one group that chains through the melee and tanks. You want to be sure that these two chains don't link to each other and that your previous stacks have fallen off. Unintuitively, the heal will trigger based on some sort of server tick rate, so it will not always proc right as you step into it. The main takeaway is that if a heal happens later than you expect, you want to make sure that there's enough time for your stacks to drop before you get into the next heal. Most of the timing is pretty lenient in phase 1, however the third heal needs to be fairly precise as it is quickly followed by MC lines and a tank soak. Depending on who has to run far for bombs, the range group might have to swap positions or make adjustments to accommodate any late players. Anything you can do to improve consistency in this phase is really important as you'll be doing it many times and should look to fully heal Azeroth by the end of P1. On Mythic, the tank soak and knockback will leave a debuff on you, so you'll have to create two separate groups and alternate soaks. These do quite a bit of damage, so it's important to top players and make sure you're not missing anyone from a soak. There are a couple spots in phase 1 I want to call out in particular. Specifically, the bounce from the third set of runes will send you flying right as torments are exploding. If you jump at the same exact time as someone and bounce in the same direction, you can actually get collateraled and die midair. Additionally, the last set of pillars will often LOS you from healers around the same time as a torment and an MC. This is a good place to use a health potion if you're low. And then finally, a couple times in phase 1, you'll be targeted with lines. If you're hit by two, including the one targeting yourself, you'll be mind controlled and need to be killed. If you get targeted with an MC line, your primary goal should be to plant and not move at all. If you need to move, you should try and do so parallel to your line. You have quite a bit of time, so you can line up the line vertically with your camera and then just walk straight forward or backwards to dodge any other lines. Moving perpendicular to your line should be a last case scenario as it can easily catch other people across the room. This ability becomes significantly easier the more you're able to pre-spread. In phase two, you will have four more sets of double soaks but players chaining the heal will now shoot Azerite Beyblades out of their character in the four cardinal directions based on their camera. These projectiles have a fairly small hitbox, but will explode in a 20 yard AOE if hit by anyone. 
There's a pretty important weak or that I'll link below that puts a giant crosshair across your screen. The goal is to aim towards the back of the other group without taking the head off your teammates in front or behind you. These soaks need to be consistent, so I like to first make sure I'm directly in line with the Puddle and Azeroth, and then be sure I'm spaced equally between two of my teammates. Then locate the boss, line up my crosshair evenly between them, and make any final minor adjustments, typically angling slightly towards the back of the other group. After the soak, all of the Beyblades will kind of blur together, so you want to be ready to sidestep towards Azeroth and dodge any incoming blades. If any stray towards the melee group, they should be called out and avoided. Healers should be extra vigilant of these players' health and make sure to top them before each soak. During phase two, the tanks will need to run out to shatter the corrupted pillars around the room. Players should make room for them when torments are coming out, and the tanks should be extra careful when returning not to connect and link with the Azeroth heals. This is a good place to use externals as tanks get used to the amount of damage they'll be taking while out of range of the boss. In phase two, the torments will leave puddles underneath you, and the runes of domination will now mind control players towards the edge of the platform until their absorbed shield is broken. Targeted players should run underneath the boss so they can be quickly CC'd, DK gripped, and bursted down. DPS should target these players directly instead of cleaving off the boss, as the sooner they're broken out, the sooner they can also resume damage. Also, any stuns will persist after the MC is broken, so you want to avoid any long CCs as the targets are being broken out. Here, the players doing Azeroth soaks will be hard pressed for time and should be dispelled and gripped as necessary. During phase two, you'll also start getting the decimator knockback. This slam is targeted near a ranged player and at a certain distance will also include a rectangular zone you need to dodge. Around the third set of mind controls, you'll get a tough overlap where the decimator slams you right after a torment is dropped You'll want to position yourself in a way that won't immediately knock you into a torment puddle. So try not to drop a torment directly behind another player and be sure to check the direction of the slam so you know exactly where we'll be safe. There's a certain height over a torment where you won't get hit, but I wouldn't recommend relying on this as a way to dodge the torment puddle. At this point in the phase, the corrupted pillars will start extending pretty far into the room, creating a choke point as you rotate to the last section. Here the AoE and torments overlap, so you'll want to have large raid CDs rolling and be as consistent as possible with your position, not dropping torments in the choke. After the last set of heals, players should move towards the center preemptively so they have time to get around the bait blades as the final MCs go out almost immediately after. During the last set of MCs, some of the events will open, so watch your feet, throw out a ring apiece, and make sure not to spear or stun players over the vent. And now for phase three. This is probably the most difficult part of the fight where mechanics are happening in quick succession and there's little time to think and reset between mechanics. Starting in this phase, the decimator will now cause large falling debris from the ceiling, making it important the range bait the slam in the correct locations. For each knockback, you'll wanna identify what direction it'll be in and adjust accordingly so you're not flung into any holes. By stacking all the ranged and melee in these set positions, we're able to bait the decimator with just enough room to get into position for the first heal. For the first set of chains, Azeroth heal, and Jailer soaks, we dropped a large DR and burst healed through the damage. This beam the Jailer is channeling requires a minimum of 17 players in it, or he will immediately walk to Azeroth and end the fight. The Azeroth heal follows closely, so you'll want to position the boss pretty close to the pool so that only one player needs to step out and chain the heal. Ideally, the chaining players on the inner side are mobile enough to stay in the soak until after the Jailer's cast is finished. Next up, you'll want to bait the Defile cast and move out immediately. The meta strategy is to take a gateway out of the first Defile to reposition for Torments. These Torments now spawn immovable adds, so you'll want to use a weak aura for quick assignments and get them stacked as close as possible. Like most guilds, we did this by stacking five groups of two in the shape of a pentagon. So for us, the sequence looked like take gateway, face the center of the room, see if you're marked with front left, front right, left, right, or middle, pop a personal to survive the double torment hit, and then group in the upper left if you don't have a specific assigned position for the next heal. 
This heal happens quickly after and will bring you up to six stacks of the debuff, doing more than your entire health pool and damage over the three ticks. Healers should look to drop their highest throughput globals between these ticks. Warrior Rally is also extremely strong for surviving the large bursts of damage throughout this phase, but you want to make sure that the buff doesn't drop early, as you can easily die to damage in combination with the buff falling. Non-assigned players quickly stacking to the left helps with AoE healing, but also guarantees that you'll get the damage buff from the heal chain. It prevents the heal from U-turning on extraneous players, and it baits the decimator in the correct position. You'll want to assign a rotation of stuns and prevent any of the adds from getting a cast off. Melee that are killing adds should be extra careful of the slam and be sure not to get launched into a hole. From here, the range should make a quick move to the outer edge of the platform to bait the next defile. The location of this defile is not critical, but it is important to bait together and make sure no one is left behind and forced to walk over the defile while trying to get away from the falling debris. As you make your journey to the next Azeroth heal, the second set of chains will come out and attach to the four closest players to the current tank. Here you always want the same four melee players to get the chains so you can coordinate the breaks in the same way on every pull. Range should slow down and be sure not to run over the boss as you have plenty of time to get to the next mechanic. If a ranged player does manage to get a chain here, they should look to break immediately. Next up, three players will be marked with large blue circles. Those players should slot in and create a triple Venn diagram in front of the next Azeroth heal, with melee stacking in the farthest, the range in the closest, and tanks in the middle circle. As soon as the absorb goes off, players should quickly get into position for a double Azeroth heal, with melee running all the way to the next puddle. The chained melee players should be prioritized for healing, as when a chained player dies, it breaks their chain, which can easily cascade into other chained players dying. In addition to all the other mechanics, every time you heal Azeroth in Phase 3, you will spawn waves of projectiles from the center of the room. This double soak is the hardest, as you'll get 6 waves of projectiles all at once. Each time this happens, you'll want to face the center of the room and find the gap between incoming projectiles. As you move to this gap, it helps to start identifying where the next gap is and how you will need to move to get there. That way, as soon as the projectiles pass, you're already moving in the right direction. We also assign life grips to certain players soaking near the center, as being away gives you more reaction time and creates bigger gaps between the projectiles. Next, the range should regroup to bait the next decimator and then move towards the edge to bait the next defile. At the same time, we elected to have two of our chain players break one after another. After the defile, the Jailer will channel another soak, and the last two chains will expire. Once again, chains will go out as the raid is moving to the next set of absorbs. The range should lag behind so that only the four designated chain players get attached. If you're able to push damage, roughly sub 40% around the start of P3, you can look to skip the final set of P3 adds. This means you don't need to link the last pool to Azeroth, and you can just soak it for the damage buff and blast the boss. Either way, you'll need to get into formation for the second healing absorb. Here the ranged and melee swap positions, with the ranged going far in order to bait the next decimator and following rubble on the opposite side of which you'll bait the next defile. This defile needs to be baited as far as possible so you don't spread it during phase 4. If you aren't pushing the boss into P4 around this time, you'll want to continue around the platform for a second set of adds and a final set of chains. You'll want to stay on top of chain breaks as you reach the 10% transition so you can go into the phase with everyone as healthy as possible. Phase 3 requires a ton of assignments in very specific positions, so I'll post a diagram like this one with all the P3 events so you can more easily make your own assignments. Before we get to Phase 4, I'll go over Phase 3 one more time. At the start of the phase, you should stack in either the ranged or melee group. Range should stay planted to bait the first decimator slam then move to the edge with the boss. The tank will break all the chains. Soak the first channeled beam. Do the first Azeroth heal. Dodge projectiles. Bait the first defile. Take the gateway. Position for torments. Heal Azeroth again. Dodge and bait the decimator. Don't get knocked in a hole. 
Range, move to the edge to bait defile. Melee, get chains on the move. Position for the first absorbs. Melee, move big heals on chains. Do a double Azeroth heal. Dodge all six waves of projectiles. Range, move to bait decimator again. Get slammed into position for the third defile. Everyone soaks the second boss channel. Melees get the next chains on the move. Do the last Azeroth heal. Dodge while getting the second absorbs in position. Avoid getting knocked in a hole by the decimator. Move far to bait the last defile. Gateway to the second add location. And deal with the last set of chains. And finally, we get to the secret phase. This phase is not as difficult, but still requires you to wrap your head around quite a bit of very specific movement. Every torment will now spawn a defile, so it's very important that everyone understands when you need to pre-spread and when you need to be near the boss. At the start of the phase, a single player will be targeted with Death Sentence, a new 30 second debuff that kills the player upon expiration. For us, this person became Mr. President and must be kept alive at all costs. Before Death Sentence expires, you can save the player by dispelling, but will cause two new circles to spawn that must be soaked, reapplying Death Sentence and creating two Mr. Presidents. So for every 30 seconds in the phase, you'll be doubling the number of people who cannot die with this high damage debuff. We started by having our tanks soak the first set of two pools, followed by the tanks plus the warlocks on the set of four, and then anybody for the set of eight death sentences. For the set of four, we assign general quadrants around the boss for each player. If you're soaking one of these pools, it's very important you get there early and claim your spot, as missing a soak is a wipe, and extra players making a hero play will also get death sentence, further duplicating and quickly spiraling out of control. From the top, we started the phase with a large boss movement to prepare for the other new mechanic of the phase, Meteor Cleave, where the boss creates a large cone aimed at the tank. The damage from this cleave is shared, so you want all players not targeted by death sentence or runes of domination to be in it. Players are also knocked back very far, so you should look back and make an adjustment to make sure you won't be flung into a hole. During the cleave, the first set of runes will go out. These should be handled by jumping into open holes just like phase one. However, not all the holes will be open, so we used a slightly modified triangle pattern where the top, right, and back right are spaced from the left, back left, and middle. It's easy to get a bit disoriented during this phase, so it's good to remember that it's almost always better to double up in a hole than to explode on top of the whole raid. By doing this large movement early and pointing the meteor cleave back in the direction of the rune soaks, players can bait the incoming decimator slam on the same side of the room, and the whole raid can dodge by running through the boss to get ready for the second set of runes and first torments. It's here you'll do the first dispel that is caught by the tanks, and the rest of the raid can start pre-spreading. There should be plenty of open holes for players with runes, and you want to think about where these players will land and how you will escape the wasteland of defiles. As you progress, you want to stay behind the boss so that the decimator slams are baited where you came from instead of where you're going. From here, it's all about coordinating each of the dispels, keeping the presidents alive, not spreading any defile, and watching out for holes on the cleave. This fight's no joke, so a huge congrats to everyone who's able to take him down. Good luck. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, yeah. God, it's over. <laughs>